Thank you and good afternoon. Um, I had an opportunity to take a helicopter tour. Uh, this is something that obviously in the last couple of weeks, this is why this has played out with the media. Uh, we follow these stories very closely. Uh, but looking to see the tour and see the reality up there, very concerning to me. Uh, I know they're making some progress, but to see the water spewing out it looked uh, pretty contaminated to me. Uh, so I'm very uh, con continue to be concerned about this. That's the reason why when this was playing out in the last four or five days, I, f I felt like we got to bring all the resources we can and bring a federal response. So in terms of the federal response, uh, the uh, where we're at now is a unified command uh, with EPA and DEP. And uh, so I want the best and the brightest on the ground. This is something that's unfortunately uh, could have been dealt with probably over the years, but I'm not looking to assess any blame or anything else. I'm here to do everything I can to help the county. And I don't think it's just Manatee County. This impacts the region. You take a look at Tampa Bay and you go up around Tampa and back to Pinellas County. I live, I have part of Hillsborough I represent, but I lived in Tampa in the Tampa Bay area. It's a wraparound with these currents and everything. So as we, you know, continue to put water out in the bay, I know that's sounds like that's the best uh, reality. And I think they have made a big difference, reducing the, the, the gallons, millions of gallons, I guess, down uh, 100, 100 million or something like this in the one reservoir. Uh, so it's a big issue from that. I am concerned about the threats to public safety, homes, uh, as well as businesses. And then of course, uh, marine life. I'm very concerned about the impact on that. We know what that does to our communities. I, I really didn't, as a member of Congress long enough, I really hate to see what's happened in terms of just the algae bloom, the red tide, not just here, but across the state, like Okeechobee. If you go from Orlando down or you go over to Stewart or Fort Myers, I've been there and I know what happens. So when I see water flowing into Tampa Bay, frankly, it makes me sick about it. From my standpoint, I just don't like to see it. I guess as a young kid growing up next to Lake Erie, I, you, it was so polluted you couldn't swim in it. If you could, or you caught a fish, you couldn't eat it. I don't want to go back to those dark days. I'm not saying we are here. Uh, I think we are making some progress. I do want to do everything we can. In terms of the helicopter flyover, it's just my observation. Again, I'm not an expert, but you can see in and around where the water's spewing in there. When they talk about uh, Bishop, harbor uh, being more pristine but even looking at that from my standpoint it's not where it should be uh, and of course around the port I hate to say it if you go a, mile, a couple of miles in each direction you see to me it looks like LG bloom or something but that's something for the scientists to determine and uh, as, as I looked at other water in the in the area and of course from where the water is coming out you can also see Tampa Bay and I know that two currents that come down through the Mississippi and because I've been following Red Tide for 20 years, uh, you know, that can have a big impact on all of Florida. And again, it gets back to public safety and, and marine life. And we see these manatees dying and, and what it does to small businesses and restaurants and everything else. Well, I mean, this one site in particular has been a ticking time bomb. And look, I, I think the, my conversation with the sheriff a little while ago, and, it appears the worst is going to be avoided, but there's still going to be some negative implications to the, these releases. As far as what the federal role can be, I and mean, this is primarily a state responsibility, I think there's time now moving forward to sort of take that into account. But I don't think what's happening now is a surprise. This is a site that everyone knew was problematic. It was an inherited site that's changed hands a few times. But eventually, that pipe was going to have to be paid, and we're going to reach a moment like it was reached here. And I think once we pass this sort of moment of crisis, uh, is an opportunity to sort of examine it more holistically at the other sites that are out there and to the extent the federal government can be a part of, of being of assistance is certainly something we'll consider uh, but, but right now our focus is making sure that if they needed any federal assistance it would be available to the state and the local government. Do you believe that this is an example of failure of state government? No this is a site that's as I said I, I, I recall correctly it's four decades in the making in terms of the situation it's now in. It was a known risk factor for a long time there had not been a lot of clarity as to what to do about it in the long term, the long term solution available for it. Um, 
Uh, so I don't think it took anybody by surprise. And, and the notification that came to the state, I believe, on Thursday and to local authorities, I thought the state responded to pretty quickly and avoided the worst case scenario. But ultimately, this is one of those things that people knew was a ticking time bomb. I don't think the issue is the state. I think the issue is where do you put it? Where do you send this? What do you do with it? There just there isn't a lot of places out there walking in the receipt of contaminated material. So, like the situation. Yeah. So right now, the Environmental Protection Agency is there as an observer. So we're going to wait for this crisis to pass in the short term, and then we're going to learn more about whether there's a role for the federal government to play moving forward or whether the state or county requires assistance from the federal government to do some of the things they want to do. Um, I think that's, like I said, I mean, it's something we need to learn more about and hear more about on the ground. Right now, everyone's kind of focused on the immediate crisis. Once it passes, there'll certainly be an opportunity to both learn from what the EPA saw and also what local authorities tell us they need. How worried about what actually happens in the Very worried. There's gonna be a negative impact. There's no doubt about it. You're putting nutrients, um, contaminated water, in a sensitive wildlife area, you're going to, I mean, we could see some bad stuff, algae blooms, uh, fish kills. It's not good. It's just not the catastrophic outcome. But this will not be a good outcome. This will be a terrible thing that's happened.